Here at Tormach, we love to tell your stories. So here's Mike Dubno in New York City, who's making a little bit of everything, including some unique automata. I've always liked the idea of being able to get a machine to do something. And so I had a computer very early on before uh, IBM PCs and things like that. And I actually took stepper motors and I wrote stepper motor drivers. I built my own and I took my sister's Smurfs and I put them on the stepper motors and got them to animate. And the natural progression for that was to actually start machining. So I started off with tiny little machines, like a little Sherline, and that was good. Uh, it did what it needed to do, but it wasn't big enough for what I needed. And then I got a Smithy. That was good. It was manual. I learned some tricks. And then what I really wanted to do is build much more sophisticated machines, sophisticated shapes. And the machine that I chose was a Tormac because it had the right price point and also was able to get down the stairs into my basement. <laughs> Everybody has a story of how their uh, workshop came to be. Uh, and usually it is a theft of space that somebody else wanted to use, uh, usually a spouse. Uh, for, for me, uh, part of buying this house, uh, the intrigue and the, actually the impetus for buying it was when the inspector came and looked at the electrical panel, saw 400 amp service and said, you could run a machine shop down here. And this was unprompted. Now this house is not outside of New York City. It is right next to Central Park. It is not a natural place where a machine shop is or has been or anyone would think naturally about that. But for some reason, the guy doing the inspection used that term. That couldn't have been more magical. And so I said, okay, honey, we have to now purchase the house just because this is the logical place to put a machine shop. And the problem, of course, is that there were only six foot ceilings at the time. There was a wood beam running through. There were air conditioning ducts running through, and there was a fairly steep staircase to get stuff down. And so the natural thing uh, was to call Jimmy DeResta. <laughs> so <laughs> Jimmy and Dave Welder came, uh, luckily, on Thanksgiving. Uh, my brother came, my son came, and I did uh, management of the project while they all figured out how to get it down the stairs. I claimed sickness, which I did have, but, uh, but they still had to do all the work. The reason why I build machines is that I actually like taking things that are normally inanimate and seeing what happens if I actually just add some artificial intelligence, some robotics, some idea of motion to it, maybe uh, showing some information or something like that. In the case of the sand table, for example, there's a regular coffee table, but it springs to life and draws something new every night. Right? At parties, it actually will draw all kinds of different things. The light show uh, is intriguing. Um, that was built about 10, 12 years ago, and that was fairly unique uh, at the time. Um, Tentalux is a different thought process, which is take something inanimate like a light fixture, and maybe the light fixture can interact with its surroundings. Maybe you do that by telling it what to do using uh, something like uh, Amazon's Alexa, cancel. <laughs> uh, or maybe you do it by having it have a camera system and be aware of its environment and then interact with its environment. And I could just see that, that growing. And maybe it's intriguing, maybe it will help people, uh, or maybe it's a waste of time. But the only way to find out is you build one. Right now, you have a standard light fixture. But if you add a plate, it will automatically light it, which is useful if you like to have plates on your table. Magic. Take it away, and one plate stands alone. One of the reasons why I built it is because I have a CNC machine. And so whenever I get a new machine, I like to figure out what's a good, fun project for me to push my abilities. And so I build something like the tentacle lamp. It required lots of vertebra. It required some plates. It required some 3D type of things, all of which were possible to do a one-off type of part manually, but almost impossible to do unless you had an automated machine. And so every machine I get, I try to figure out what project that sort of inspires me to do. And obviously a CNC machine like this inspires me to do a lot more. Thanks for watching. Check out all of our latest videos here. And for more metalworking tips, tricks, and stories, subscribe to our YouTube channel.